What up, B's and G's? So a few days ago, I decided to put aside some of my other projects to try something different. Today, we're gonna to try to 3D print an N95 mask, like this one. So most of you know, the world's in pretty bad shape right now. Doctors are running out of N95 masks, like stores are running out of toilet paper. The only difference is toilet paper can't save your life. So I don't get why people are hoarding it. Anyway, I know a lot of you guys are thinking, this fool is crazy. You really think you can 3D print, 3D print a mask that will stop the coronavirus? Well, I, like you, was like, that's impossible. But I discovered there's this company called Copper 3D, and they've developed this filament that's copper-infused PLA. And apparently, copper is a naturally antimicrobial element, so that means it kills germs and stuff. So you take copper, you take regular PLA, infuse it, boom, you got a 3D printable antimicrobial filament. It's pretty sick. So these guys recently, this company recently released an open source CAD model for an N95 mask that people can print, and ideally with, with their filament. And they're a really hot topic. They had almost two and a half million downloads in the last couple of days, so much that their website actually crashed. And their filament is also going out of stock. I looked everywhere for it. Only place I could find it was like the Netherlands and Austria. I ordered myself one, but in the meantime, I'm gonna use my own PLA because they're both PLA based and the process of actually building the mask is gonna be the same. Warnings. One, I am not a scientist. I'm a dude with a 3D printer, all right? I'm Eric Inventor. So don't come at me with the scientific attacks, okay? Two, yes, I'm using, I repeat, regular PLA the one that everyone and their mother prints with. So, no, I'm not claiming that the mask I'm gonna make in this video is actually effective against coronavirus. However, if you use their expensive, copper-infused, fancy $100 plaque tube, it's much more likely to be effective against coronavirus. Check the links in the description to learn more about the company, their filament, and the mask, and their instructions on how to make the mask. And in case you guys think that this company is trying to save the world with some hoax, you know, they've actually been around since 2017, They've been developing like prosthetics, medical devices for the purposes, applications that need to be antimicrobial. And, and no, they're not promoting me to, to say this because let's be honest, guys, my subscriber count, I'm not that cool. I'm not that cool. They wouldn't pay me. So as usual, I think we're just going to send it. All right guys, here's what you're gonna need. First, most importantly, a 3D printer. I have an Ender 3 Pro, it's pretty sick, but any printer that prints PLA should work. You're gonna need the 3D printed parts, of course, there's three of them, uh, two rubber bands, a hot glue gun, a hair dryer, make cotton makeup pad removers, and then foam window seal. So this is what we're gonna use to actually seal the perimeter and make it more comfortable on your face. Most of these materials are pretty easy to find. If you can't find this foam window seal, check your local hardware store. Uh, but if you can't get it, no big deal. You're just gonna have to form it to your face a little bit better and it might not be as comfortable. But you don't absolutely need this. All right, let's do it. So you're gonna to wanna to fold the sides, the bottom up and the sides in so they kind of meet the curve of the bottom panel. And you actually kind of wanna bow the bottom one down so that it fits around your chin. All right, once you have it mostly bent into shape, take the right corner of the bottom part and kind of pinch it with the side. And then take your hot glue and fill in the cracks. And try not to burn yourself. like that. So on the other side, you're gonna do pretty much the same thing, but because this part's really hard, since it has the, the rim here, 
I'm actually going to leave it underneath and fill the gap in this way. Okay, so once you've sealed both sides, bring it up to your face, kind of see how it fits and see what you need to do to make it fit better. So now we're going to do the, the nose part. You're going to heat up just kind of the top area and fold these in. Once you've done the nose, again, put up to your face and see how it fits. And you might have to kind of bend it a little bit in more to touch the, your cheeks, depending on your face shape. Heat it up and reform it to your face until it fits well. So now we're gonna use the window sealant to line the perimeter with a nice padding. Next, we're going to put in the filter using cotton pad. So in this case, it's a little bit big, so I'm just going to fold it slightly so that it fits. Push it in there. Put in a little wafer. And then screw this bad boy on. Now all that's left is putting on the straps. So just take your rubber bands, put them through, and then through themselves, like this. Same on the other side. All right, so my mask is pretty much done. If you're having trouble getting it formed to your face, uh, just heat it up again and press it in. Uh, you can also add more window seal to add more padding wherever you need to fill in gaps. Let's see how it looks. All right, guys, so I finished the mask. Here's my review. Is it comfortable? Actually, surprisingly, yes. I didn't expect to be so comfortable, but if you use these weather strip seal things and you put the padding where you need it, as well as if you heat it up and press it against your face to really mold it along your face contours, it can actually be impressively comfortable. Does it work? Well, here's what I'll tell you. I'm not gonna go out there and try to find out. No, but actually it doesn't because this is regular PLA like I told you guys. But if you use the copper infused PLA filament sold by Copper 3D, I think it's called Plactive, link in the description, you should be able to make one that's actually effective against coronavirus, or at least that's what they would tell you. So I asked Google, how many of you guys have 3D printers? And Google said about a million of you in 2020. So if you take that number and you do some, some quick masks, you basically get a lot of masks for a lot of doctors in need. So if, if you're a dude with a printer in your basement like me or a company looking to help, you start printing these masks, start sending them to hospitals in need. If you don't know who to donate to, your local hospital probably needs them. But I'm going to put another link in the description that can show you other hospitals across the country who really need these. Yeah, in summary, I think we should all just send it, like literally, to hospitals. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make your own mask, help stop coronavirus, and don't forget to pound that subscribe button. Later, boys. Later, boys.